Are you looking for a part cooling upgrade to suit most 3D printers? Today we fit the Hero Me Gen 7 to the end of 5. Some of the best 3D printer upgrades you can do are those you simply print yourself for free and the Hero Me Gen 7 fits that description. I've already covered the first and fifth generations of the Hero Me in the past and it has continued to mature and evolve to have supreme modularity and compatibility. The target printer is this Ender 5 which needed some reconfiguration before I could start. For me the Ender 5 reviewed quite well way back in January 2019. And looking at its current state, it's clear I've had a great time modifying it too. The most obvious change is the custom lid and matching insulated and actively heated chamber, taken care of by a pair of mains powered heaters in the rear. Looking underneath the lid, we can also see that it has a linear rail conversion, and because of the chamber, I let this printer remain Bowden tube instead of direct drive. The print head has a Euclid docking ABL probe, but is otherwise quite stock in terms of the fan enclosure and the part cooling. In the bottom we have a custom 3D printed enclosure with four fans to move cool air in and out of the electronics compartment and keep it separate to the rest. We also have a Big Tree Tech Manta M4P board running Clipper. All of these mods and more have been covered in their own videos and I've linked them below in the description. The idea behind most of these mods was to create a printer with an actively heated chamber typically reaching just under 70 degrees. And this was to help me print filaments that like to warp, things like ABS, ASA and nylon. But the truth is, I found it hard to seal the drafts and these filaments would still warp, meaning the whole solution really wasn't that effective. Especially once I got my hands on a Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. No active heating, but a very tidy enclosure, and that means beautiful warp-free prints, and consequently, the Ender 5 has been sitting idle collecting dust. So we start this video by unmodifying any parts where I can salvage back hardware that can be used in other 3D printers and other projects. And you might be surprised by how much hardware goes into a custom build like this, with all of these components just coming from the lid. The most annoying part is removing the acrylic window panels so I can laser cut them into something else. And that's because the top part of the frame needs to be disassembled and pushed to the side to get access to slide everything out. But again, more materials recovered for other projects. With the window panels off, I had easy access to the chamber heating system. And that netted me some PTC ceramic heaters, a couple of 4010 fans, a high quality solid state relay, and even a spare thermistor. And of course, to keep the firmware correct, I had to remove any sections relating to this heating system. My custom electronics compartment had four fans, so it was equally large and noisy. I still had the original Ender 5 case, so my next job was to reinstall it and create a printable adapter for the new mainboard. To get everything to fit, I created this simple bracket. It moves the power supply approximately 8mm to the left, which allows just enough room for the Manta mainboard to sit to the right. There's also room for the heated bed relay, and this and the power supply are earthed to the frame since there's a plastic spacer underneath the power supply. There's now room for everything except the original electronics fan, which fails on the mainboard heat sinks. So I designed this super simple new 3010 fan mount, which moves the fan out of the way and blowing across the stepper driver heat sinks. The original cover panel goes underneath and the new much larger mainboard remains a secret unless of course you're watching this video. In case you're running the same setup, the link to download this adapter on printables is in the description. Now let's move on to the main event, the Hero Me Gen 7 system. The Hero Me Gen 7 is found on printables. If we look at the pictures, we can see that it's a part cooling system, but the pictures also suggest that it's highly modular, because each of these images are variations of the same system, and that's because this system aims to support as many printers, ABL options and other hardware as possible. At the time of recording, it's up to release 3.2, which has added support for a range of new printers and hardware. To achieve this wide compatibility, the Hero Me is designed in modular pieces, and we build them together like blocks. If you'd like to see an interview with Andy the Creator, where the whole system is explained, then I'd recommend this video from Joel at 3D Printing Nerd. For this video, however, we're going to download the zip and the accompanying documentation. You should start with the README, which has a history of the design and some news about updates to come, plus contact details. 
Next, we have the printer and component compatibility guide. It lists all of the printers and hardware that absolutely are supported, and it also lists any hardware that isn't currently supported. Before going any further, you should check through this document and make sure that your particular combination of parts is supported. It's also worth noting that there's quite a few remixes that add support for additional components, and it's worth checking this list before giving up if something you need is not there. Inside the zip, we have a bunch of folders with various STLs for printing. The system is modular, and these are arranged by each component that you will need. For instance, everyone will need a base. Everyone will also need a gantry adapter, and these are organized further into folders by manufacturer. Everyone also needs a hot end mount, but if you've changed yours to something that didn't come with the printer, because the system is modular, you simply select the mount for the hot end that you have. The same goes with ABL. There's a good chance that whatever you're running on your particular printer will be supported here. In my case, that included the Euclid probe. There's also some optional parts here for cable management, accelerometer mounts, and in the options folder, covers for the heatsink fan, mounts for pen plotters and endoscopes. You might notice that there's no documentation for printing and installation included. And while all of the files are free to print, to get the documentation, you need to become a patron of Media Man. The base tier has a 56 page manual, and I would say for the vast majority of people, this manual plus the images on printables will be informative enough to be able to put the system together. This is difficult for me because I want my video to be as informative as possible, but I have to blur this document so I don't undermine the system. For those that need additional assistance, the next two tiers both include access to a Discord server, and that includes being able to ask for support and receiving an answer in a timely manner. It's also worth noting that for those that don't want to enter a subscription model, there's also a shop set up on the page where you can buy the PDF or support videos outright. With all of that out of the way, let's talk about printing the components. I chose to print all of the parts in PETG on the Bamboo Lab P1P, and I left all the parts oriented as downloaded. One tall part in this ABL probe needed a brim to stop it from tipping over, and other parts like this actual fan duct required support to deal with the overhangs. Apart from that, the printing was quite straightforward, and once you have all of the components, you can start to slot them together and see the modular design. Some of these parts I initially selected incorrectly, such as this Ender 5 base plate, which failed on some of the bolts of my printer mod's MDD plate. It wasn't until after I took to it with a grinder that I noticed there was a folder for printer mods with better fitting parts so make sure to explore all of the folders thoroughly to avoid a similar mistake. I also used this narrow ABL mount remix, as the default ABL mount was rotating my probe 90 degrees, and the remixed version fixed this. If you've only got one 3D printer, you're going to want to mock everything up as much as possible before disassembling anything in case you need to reprint. Time for disassembly of the old components and then reassembly with the Hero Me. Clearly, disassembly is going to be different depending on what printer you have, but in my case, I just kept on unscrewing things until I was back to the gantry. For installation, you're going to need a range of different screws and hardware. It's going to differ depending on your combination of parts, but I found I largely needed M3 between 6 and 18mm in length, some various length M3 threaded inserts, and of course, the larger part cooling fan to suit whatever duct you printed, matching the voltage to your printer. The install starts by melting in the threaded inserts, and it's important to match the length to the printed part because we don't want them hanging out the back and fouling on the parts that will be later installed. The trickiest ones are those on top because they're in a recessed area. So to get them sitting flush at the right height, I use the back of a drill bit to hold them in position until the plastic cooled. And here's my base piece with the inserts in position, and I probably could have skipped some of these because I'm only running a duct and a fan on the right hand side. I did skip those underneath because I'm not running an accelerometer. Before anything goes onto the printer, our gantry plate and our base need to be attached to each other. Like most of this installation, you simply locate the right length M3 bolts and then torque everything up. We then secure this sub-assembly to the printer's gantry, and once again, this is going to be different for pretty much every printer. So what you're seeing here is just a single example. And if you're wondering what those two holes in the front of the base were, that's for printers like the Ender 3 and 5, so you can reach through to the hot end bolts beneath. Your hot end then attaches to the hot end mount. In my case, it's a micro Swiss that matches the dimensions of the factory hot end. You can then remove the silicon sock to make the hot end as narrow as possible. 
feed it through the opening in the base from above, and then use two more M3 bolts to secure this in place. Next up, I reinstalled the factory 4010 heatsink fan using an optional fan guard with another four M3 bolts. Now it's just a matter of installing further components, starting with my cable mount on the right hand side, followed by the remixed ABL mount on the left hand side that also has some threaded inserts melted in. My probe went into the probe mount and this was only loosely placed on the machine as I still needed to adjust the height properly to get everything to line up nicely with the probe dock. All of the ABL mounts have this same vertical sliding system so it's very easy to adjust them to the height that you require. Back on the right hand side, I then loosely installed the fan holder and duct. Like earlier, there's a little access hole to get your tool to the bolts beneath. In the options folder is this little tool for setting the height of the duct. Your nozzle goes through the middle and then you slide your duct or ducts down until they just touch the top surface. The bolts for the duct can then be torqued to hold it in the correct position. At this point, I finally wired in the new fan and slid it into the duct. A couple more bolts will lock it into position. To finish off, I tied down the wires to the cable management post and covered everything back over with my wiring sleeve. Overall, I'd say installation is like a 3D puzzle and quite straightforward with the PDF guide. Now a few little areas of tuning and then some test prints. Most of the tweaks you'll have to do apply if you're running auto bed leveling, such as re-measuring your probe X and Y offsets and updating these values either in the EEPROM or the firmware, depending on what you're running. You'll also need to recalculate your probe Z offset. And in my case, I use Clipper's built-in probe calibrate function. If you're not running auto bed leveling, you'll at least have to recheck the level of your bed. Furthermore, for my machine, since it uses a docking probe, I had to manually jog the printer around to determine the XY locations of the three docking points. Again, updating the firmware to reflect these new coordinates in the docking macros. If you're running input shaping with an accelerometer, you're going to want to retune that as well, as the mass of the hot end assembly has changed. One step that everyone should do is rerunning PID auto tune since the hot end configuration has changed. That's because any duct will blow near the nozzle and that changes the heating requirements and therefore you should retune. As you might hope, I did some before and after benchmarking using a part designed for this purpose several years ago. But on top of that, I also did a simple water test with the part cooling fan running at 100%. With the factory end of 5 duct, we can see that it's not pointing underneath the nozzle. It seems like it is until you lower it down and then it moves closer towards the fan duct exit. The Hero Me duct, even though I'm only running it on one side, blows much harder than before as can be seen by the indentation in the water and as we move it down into position, we can see it's blowing directly beneath the nozzle. So better on paper, but how do the real world results compare? Based on this test print, I would say it's a nice step up. Firstly, if we inspect the underside, we can see the bridging is a lot neater. And then if we compare each overhang tower, we can see that on the right, the Hero Me version is a little bit neater for each as well. The thin spire on top is particularly demanding, and the Hero Me only has a marginal improvement here. Overall, as with the previous versions, I'm giving the Hero Me Gen 7 a tick. Its modular design pushes the limits on how much compatibility can be achieved, and I was pleasantly surprised to find that my Euclid ABL probe was supported without me doing any redesigning. Printing, documentation and assembly is also good, and you can tell the design is mature because it's got some features that fresh designs might omit, such as these clearance holes for feeding in tools. Most importantly, I saw a clear improvement in part cooling, and this is despite me only running a single fan on one side. I would recommend that most people run twin fans, as this will give better cooling, and it means you can run the fans at lower speed when you don't need it to lower the volume. In terms of downsides, this combination of parts was heavier than what was existing already on the printer. This added weight actually resulted in a layer shift on my first test print, meaning I had to lower the acceleration. It's also worth noting that with this design, the hot end will be shifted forward approximately 9mm. The instructions have some steps for tweaking print offsets, and if you don't do this, your objects will no longer be centered. Specifically for the end of 5, the instructions warn about potential clearance issues at the front of the printer, but I didn't experience that. For me, this added offset meant the nozzle couldn't quite reach the back of the bed, so I will need to tweak my end stop position to get back the missing print volume. The versatility of this Hero Me design really is fantastic. What I didn't do to this printer but is entirely possible is converting it from Bowden tube to direct drive. 
In my opinion, the Hero Me system can breathe new life into older, cheaper 3D printers like this. But let me know your opinion in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy upgraded 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe, and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.